Lay back, relax, close your eyes, and fall asleep to these short stories that I'm going to read you. Story 1. The Midnight Odyssey of Sir Benedict In the mystical far-off kingdom of Fairhaven, a land cradled by mountains and caressed by seas, there resided an exemplary knight. This esteemed warrior bore the name of Sir Benedict. With his imposing, robust stature and weathered features, etched by the skirmishes of a thousand battles, Benedict was an embodiment of strength and resilience. His stern gaze radiated wisdom and compassion, sculpted by years of unwavering dedication to his kingdom and its people. His hair, as dark as the raven's wing, had started to show the hints of time, with silver streaks coursing through it, adding an air of majesty to his striking persona. He was garbed in an ornate suit of armour, dark as a moonless night with an emerald cloak that billowed in the wind, adding to his grandeur. A man of honour and loyalty, Benedict had won the affection of many, yet his heart belonged to only one, Fairhaven. Fairhaven was an enchanting kingdom, bathed in the soft hues of magic and shrouded in a mystical aura. It was enveloped in a magnificent wall of enchanted stone, standing as an eternal guardian against the threats of the outer world. The kingdom was a grand vision of ivory castles that pierced the sky with their towering spires. Cobblestone streets buzzing with lively chatter and bustling trade, and gardens thriving with vibrant flora that seemed to bloom throughout the season. The sapphire sky was dotted with gleaming spires, so tall they seemed to challenge the gods in their lofty abode. Clear, winding rivers flowed through the kingdom, their waters as clear as crystal, serenading the Denzians of Fairhaven with their tranquil melody. However, under the surface of this serene tranquility, a dire threat was emerging. An ominous prophecy had been delivered by the oldest soothsayer of the kingdom, Madame Irina. Despite her eyes having turned milky white with age and blindness, they had seen a terrifying vision of a looming darkness engulfing Fairhaven turning the once flourishing kingdom into a barren land of despair. The prophecy spread through the kingdom, swift as a forest fire, casting a shadow of fear over the once jovial land. Tormented by the prophecy and the potential devastation it foretold, King Aldric, a man renowned for his courage and wisdom, summoned Sir Benedict. The grandeur of the royal court was awe-inspiring, with its gilded pillars beckoned in ivory and sapphires gleaming under the glow of torchlight. Upon his throne of golden oak, King Aldric wore his crown. Heavy with the weight of responsibility, his eyes mirroring his grave concern, Benedict, you have served this kingdom with unyielding devotion and unmatched valour, King Aldric began, his voice echoing through the regal hall. I now beseech you to undertake a quest of profound significance. The prophecy of darkness must be averted. 
Are you prepared to journey to the heart of the Wailing Woods and seek counsel from the Ancient One? Rising from his knee, Sir Benedict responded, his eyes a beacon of determination. My liege, for Fairhaven, I shall brave any peril. The Wailing Woods were steeped in ancient folklore. A mystical forest that had stood witness to countless centuries. It held a timeless charm. Its aura bore an ancient allure, an enchanting call to those who dared to venture within its depths. The woods were a patchwork of majestic trees, their emerald leaves rustling in the breeze as if whispering timeless secrets. The forest floor was carpeted with plush moss and ferns, with clusters of wildflowers adding a vibrant splash of colours. Twinkling streams meandered through the landscape, their waters alive with a myriad of creatures, offering a soothing lullaby to the forest's inhabitants. As Sir Benedict ventured into the forest, the hoots of owls reverberated through the verdant expanse, along with the rustling of leaves and the distant gurgling of streams. Despite the forest's undeniable beauty, an eerie undertone permeated the air, as if the trees themselves were sentient beings, observing the night with age-old wisdom. The path was treacherous and winding, but Sir Benedict pressed on, his resolve as firm as the ancient stones of Fairhaven. Under the spectral glow of the moon, the verdant woods transformed into a realm of shadows and silhouettes, and the stars peeked through the canopy, casting a faint glow on the forest floor. Nocturnal creatures rustled in the undergrowth, their eyes glimmering in the starlight. Yet, the night pressed on, the haunting melody of the woods whispering tales of yore and legends of old. As he ventured deeper into the forest, Benedict chanced upon a secluded glade bathed in ethereal moonlight. At its heart stood an ancient tree, as old as the forest itself, perhaps even older. Its colossal trunk was swathed in moss and climbing vines, and its roots seemed to burrow deep into the heart of the earth. Its expansive branches spread out like the limbs of a giant, leaves rustling gently. The tree emanated an air of solemnity and wisdom, enveloping the glade with a spectral aura, with his armour reflecting the moon's pale glow. Benedict approached the tree. As he neared it, the bark of the tree morphed to form a face. The Ancient One had awakened. Eyes as green as the forest canopy. Blinked open and a mouth appeared, shaping into a deep, resonant voice that echoed through the silence of the glade. Night of Fair Haven. Thou seek wisdom to dispel the encroaching darkness? The Ancient One asked, its gaze penetrating Benedict's soul. With a firm voice, Benedict answered, Yes, I seek your guidance to save my kingdom. The Ancient One seemed to ponder, the wind holding its breath the creature of the night falling silent. The rustling of the leaves was the only sound for what felt like an eternity. Then the Ancient One spoke again. Only the pure of heart can banish the darkness. 
Seek the Star of Serenity, concealed within the Cavern of Shadows. Its power can dispel the impending doom, but tread carefully, for the path is fraught with danger. With renewed determination and hope, Benedict set off towards the Cavern of Shadows, the weight of his kingdom's fate pressing on his armoured shoulders. His heart was steadfast, his spirit unbroken. As dawn's first rays seeped through the dense canopy, Benedict delved deeper into the wailing woods, his fate intertwined with that of Fairhaven. Sir Benedict's midnight odyssey echoed through time, symbolising courage, devotion, and unwavering loyalty. His epic journey, no matter how arduous and fraught with peril, served as a reminder that even when confronted with impending doom, the flame of hope never flickers out. It stands as a beacon of light amid the storm of despair, promising that the night is darkest before dawn and every end is but a precursor to a new beginning. Story 2 Copper's Magical Misadventure Once upon a moonlit night in the quiet town of Arvendale, an enchanting tale began to unfurl. Our protagonist, an unusually intelligent tabby cat named Copper, was known for his distinctive, shimmering, copper-toned fur that sparkled in the sun and moonlight alike. His eyes, green as freshly sprouted spring leaves, held a mischievous glint and his agile body moved with a grace that belied his humble existence as a stray. Arvendale nestled between towering hills and winding rivers. It was a picturesque town with cobblestone streets, charming red-roofed houses, and a population of friendly, albeit eccentric, folk. The townspeople had an affinity for the magical and mystical. Their local lore steeped in the tales of witches, wizards, and enchanted beings. Among them, Copper moved unseen and unheard, a silent observer of the strange happenings in the town. One cold evening, Copper's life took a turn for the extraordinary when he crossed paths with a sly, seemingly ordinary mouse named Rascal. However, this was no ordinary rodent. Rascal was notorious for his cunning, using his ability to turn invisible to pilfer food and trinkets from the good people of Arvendale. Determined to put an end to Rascal's tricks, Copper embarked on a journey to outwit the mischievous mouse. Using his keen senses and street-smart intelligence, he began tracking Rascal's invisible movements, his ears picking up the faintest rustle, his eyes catching the tiniest shift in the surroundings. The chase led him through winding streets, dark alleys, lush gardens, and even across the gently lapping waters of the town's river. One day, while tailing Rascal into the heart of the forest that skirted Arvendale, Copper stumbled upon a hidden meadow. The meadow was bathed in an ethereal glow, an ancient-looking stone at its centre, pulsating with a mysterious light. With caution and curiosity, Copper approached the stone. To his surprise, he found that it bore an inscription, glowing with an otherworldly light. Only the one who commands the unseen can reveal the truth. Its meaning of the words began to sink in. Copper realised that stone was a beacon of magical energy, capable of granting extraordinary powers to the one who could unlock its secret. 
The plot twisted here. The copper reasoned that Rascal's invisible escapades were not a natural trait, but a result of this magic stone. Emboldened by this revelation, Copper decided to turn the tables. He would use the stone's magic to catch Rascal red-handed and expose his trickery. But how to command the unseen? As he pondered this riddle, the answer came to him. He had always moved unseen and unheard among the townsfolk. He was as unseen as the invisible Rascal. With newfound determination, Copper touched the stone and immediately felt a surge of energy course through him. His fur stood on end, his eyes shone brighter, and he could suddenly see the invisible. He could see Rascal. Armed with his new magical sight, Copper chased Rascal through the forest, over the hills and streams, until they reached the heart of Arvindale. With a crowd of townsfolk watching, Copper cornered Rascal in the town square. To the townsfolk's amazement, Copper pounced into what seemed like thin air, and out popped Rascal. His invisibility was gone. The townsfolk cheered as they realised their tormentor had been caught. Copper, their silent protector, had saved the day. From that day forward, Copper was no longer an unseen stray. He became the town's beloved guardian. His magical journey from a stray cat to a hero, forever etched in Arvindale's rich tapestry of mystical tales. And so, the tale of Copper and his magical misadventure serves as a reminder to the unseen potential within us all waiting to be unearthed. So, as you drift into sleep, dream of Arvindale, of copper, and who knows, perhaps a bit of magic awaits you too in the realm of dreams. Story 3 A Summer of Flowers In the quaint, unassuming town of Hazelwood, Nestled amidst emerald hills and whispering streams, lived the heart of an enchanting tale of young love. Hazelwood was the quintessence of timeless charm, with cobblestone streets that wound around like an elaborate labyrinth, vintage brick houses adorned with blue trimmed windows that peeped out over beautifully tended gardens and the intoxicating scent of lilacs and wisteria that perfumed the air. As the gentle seasons danced by, residents and travellers alike were greeted with the picturesque panorama of this idyllic town, a scene right out of a vibrant watercolour painting. Adding to this serene landscape was a canopy of azure, that mirrored the innocence and brilliance of a story about to unfold. Amid the tranquility and the warm embrace of Hazelwood, lived two teenagers whose lives were about to converge in a heartfelt journey of first love. Noah and Lily. Noah was much like the morning sun exuding a brightness that was as comforting as it was inspiring. His charisma was warming, his mere presence a panacea that imbued those around him with a sense of calm. His hair was a tussled mess of chestnut curls that, under the sun's kiss, glowed with a halo-like sheen, making him appear as if he belonged to the ethereal. Standing tall with an athletic build, a testament to his years spent on the school's soccer team, he carried himself with grace that was as captivating as it was intriguing. His eyes were a deep blue, reminiscent of the midsummer sky and sparkling with the laughter and mischief 
that echoed his youthful spirit. With a charm that was innately his, and a zest for life that coloured his world with joy and adventure. Noah was like a living, breathing embodiment of a day brimming with potential. In stark, yet harmonious contrast to Noah was Lily, a picture of the moon's understated elegance. Her beauty was not ostentatious. Instead, it was serene, comforting, and yet disarmingly captivating. With soft auburn hair that tumbled down to her shoulders in cascading waves, she was like a muse right out of a classic painting. Her freckle-dusted cheeks wore a perennial blush, a delicate pink that added a tender contrast to her porcelain skin. Lily's eyes, an enchanting blend of hazel and green, were deep pools that reflected the warmth of her soul and her inherent kindness. Often found with her nose buried in a book of poetry or art, she was attuned to the whispers of the universe. Her heart resonated with the beauty and the rhythm of the cosmos. Her spirit was a soothing balm, much like the tranquility of a moonlit night. It was one radiant summer that the paths of Noah and Lily intertwined. Their meeting ground was a resplendent field of golden sunflowers that stretched out the very edges of Hazelwood. The field was a living testament to nature's timeless beauty, where towering sunflowers swayed in a tender dance under the sun's tender gaze. The rustling of the leaves in the gentle breeze seemed to whisper tales of love and longing, and it was here, amid the sun-kissed landscape under the endless sky, that Noah and Lily found their hearts beginning to beat in a rhythm that was as enchanting as it was new. Noah, with his charismatic smile and infectious laughter, brought a previously unknown vibrancy into Lily's tranquil world. He showed her the sheer exhilaration of a closely fought soccer match. The heart-thumping thrill of a bike race down Hazelbrook's sloping paths, and the simple joy of letting go and embracing life's beautiful chaos. With his radiant presence and his larger-than-life persona, he made her heart flutter in a way that she had only read about in the countless pages of her cherished novels. Lily, with her calming presence and her depth, introduced Noah to the tranquil pleasures of life. She painted for him a world where the silence of a starlit night echoed more words than the day, where the joy of getting lost in a captivating novel was an adventure in itself, and where the enchanting world of poetry was hidden in the rhythm of the universe itself. She taught him to see life in colours that he never knew existed, adding depth to his world that he had never anticipated. As their friendship bloomed into something deeper, akin to the sunflowers around them, their every day began to be a montage of stolen glances and shy smiles, of words spoken and unspoken, and the emotions that were new yet felt as comfortable as a well-loved book. They would meet under the warm canopy of sunflowers, their laughter echoing through the fields, their dreams and hopes shared in hushed whispers, and sometimes they would reveal in the comfort of a silence that spoke volumes. Their hands would brush against each other, sending jolts of electricity coursing through their veins their hearts pounding in anticipation of the budding affection, their young love casting a beautiful glow around them. Their romance bloomed and flourished under the summer sun, maturing and becoming more vibrant with each passing day. 
in a moment that was as inevitable as it was awaited, under the warm embrace of the sun, amidst the field of flowers. Noah took Lily's hand in his. He gazed into her eyes, his own reflecting the love and hope that he found mirrored in hers. With the golden sunflowers swaying gently around them, he leaned in, capturing her lips in a kiss that was as passionate as it was tender, marking the blossom of their youthful love. Their summer romance was a melody of whispered I love yous, stolen kisses under the golden canopy, and promises of a tomorrow bathed in the glow of love. It was a testament to the innocent charm of first love, a love so profound, so overwhelming, that it imprinted itself into the heart and soul of Hazelwood. As autumn approached, painting the world in a myriad hues of red and orange, Noah and Lily, wrapped in the warmth of their newfound love, promised to nurture it. They vowed to let it grow and bloom, much like the sunflowers that had stood as silent witnesses to their beautiful story. Their love story, a gentle symphony of affection and longing, still echoes through the sunflower field, reminding every passerby of a tale as timeless as the town of Hazelwood itself. And as the day turns into night, under the moon's tender gaze, their love story continues to unfold, like a never-ending melody, a testament to the beautiful summer of sunflowers. <laughs>